Hello and welcome to another of our Photoshop tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to be creating a digital background so that you can later paste on your extracted images. The background we're going to be creating is the typical muslin type of background used in photographer's studios. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that it's a pretty large file. We're going to make it an 8 by 10 inch photographer's standard sized so we do new documents and we make sure that it is as I said before 8 inches wide by 10 inches long and we'll have a resolution of 300 pixels per inch okay so we'll create this here so now I've got my new document, uh, I'm going to make a selection by clicking the uh, marquee tool here and I'm going to make this selection about this size here, a little selection box occupying just a part of the image. Now I'm going to fill this selection with clouds and then I'm going to stretch it around. So um, if I go to my filter menu underneath render I have an option which says clouds. Now this will fill the selection with clouds of the color that I've got selected at the moment. So I click clouds there and I'll get black and white clouds. There we go. Just make that a little larger so you can see it. Um, black and white clouds being as I had a black and white background. Now this is basically our backdrop. Uh, I press the move tool here or V on the keyboard. Uh, make sure that this show bounding box is selected uh, that gives me some handles on, on my selection and now I can move it around it'll click magnetically lock into the corner there and I'll stretch it over to the other corner here and that could very well be used as a background in itself so what we'll do is we'll take our extracted image and then we'll paste it on and we'll try the various different backgrounds to see which one looks best so that's one layer. I'm going here to the layers palette and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to turn off this layer here and I'll do exactly the same thing again. Make a small selection box. Now this time I'm going to try a different colour. I'm going to try a, a blue and white background for instance. So here's our colour picker. Click on this here. I have a fairly deep blue there for our foreground colour and the background colour I'll leave as white. I'll go to filter, uh, render and clouds and there we have a blue and white cloudy background. Uh, now I could stretch this as before which would make a good background but just to give it a little bit more detail I'm going to use a feature which is called difference clouds. Down in the render again of the filter menu instead of clouds this time difference clouds and this basically is the same as having a difference on the levels here on the layers it creates an overlay with the difference of the two layers so basically if you do it twice like so then you get a different technique so now click on the move make sure bounding box is selected Oops, slot it in there and click it down to the bottom here there we go double click to accept the transformation and there we have another layer I'm going to do another one so I've got my three backgrounds there that'll do for now um, one thing left to do is to create what's known as a hot spot. Now this is uh, like a lighting effect really. It's like having the image backlit almost. So I'll click on our layer and I'll press Ctrl D to deselect it. And now I'll go over here to the marquee selection tool and I'll select elliptical marquee tool. I'll make an ellipse here in the center of the image, very approximate. I'm going to move this around later. And what I'm going to do is to create an adjustment layer. Um, now I'll click over here, create an adjustment layer, and the uh, layer I want is a hue and saturation one. 
there we go here's a hue and saturation dialog box now this will only apply to the area that I had selected uh, I don't want to be bothered with the hue and the saturation I don't want to change the color at all I'm just going to deal with the lightness and I'm going to make it completely black I'm going to make it dark all the way over here and I'll press OK now I don't want it to be black I want it to be white and I want the outside area to be black so I'm just going to invert it click on the mask press Control I and that inverts it um, now two more things I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to blur it completely so I'll go into filters and blur and I'll select Gaussian blur and I want a really high value Gaussian blur um, let's have a look a lower value and it'll be quite sharp still I will have to take it up really high so that's very nicely faded in there at maximum blur I'll press OK just wait for it to finish rendering and there we go and one more thing just to bring the, the background back in as it were is to make this uh, adjustment layer opaque so I'll click on the selector here and I'll slide it down a bit if I slide it all the way then it, it uh, takes away the effect completely so I want it to be dark around the edges but not black now that would be a very moody photograph a very moody portrait and that would be a little slightly more atmospheric um, and I'll leave it there now the uh, parameters of this hotspot of this lighting effect if you like can be changed at any point that's uh, the whole idea of putting them onto an adjustment layer we can change them completely configurable we can even move the spot around so um, what I'm going to do now is to paste on an image that I extracted earlier and then we can move the hotspot around make it larger smaller brighter darker whatever is needed to accompany the image and the background that we select for it so here's an image that I created earlier I'm just going to drag on the extracted layer drag the layer itself onto our image here there we go I'll press the move tool to move it around and move it down here so there we have the image in the middle of our new picture in the middle of our backdrop So now I'm going to move the uh, hotspot around to accompany the image. So I'll click on the adjustment layer we have here. With the move tool selected, I'll click on show bounding box. That will give us little handles. And that's the center of our light. So I can actually move this around as I like. So I'll move it right behind his head there. Make it a little bit bigger. A little bit more ellipse and I'll twist it round come down here a bit out there a bit and there we have quite an atmospheric effect double click on it to render it and just so we can have a good look at it I'll unclick show bounding box and that's not a bad uh, that's not a bad effect that we've got there very dark around the edges lighting you can see and it's uh, quite a respectable imitation of the muslin backdrops that uh, are used in professional photography studios. So let's just try this uh, image with th some of the other backgrounds that we created. And there he goes nicely on the blue layer, it's a bit bright. Let's try it on the black layer, that's quite atmospheric as well. So there you have it three different backgrounds easily created and a completely configurable hotspot. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it uh, you can try going to our website which is www.photographybook.net We've got some interesting some more tutorials on that site and there's our blog which is full of information on photography in general. So, thank you for joining us, thank you for watching, and until next time.